What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex. My name is Travis. In today's video, we're going to be doing an update here on the 300 gallon reef. Now over the last couple weeks, I've made some changes, added some livestock, so I figured it'd be a perfect time to give you guys an update, show you the coral growth and all the changes that are going on in the tank. So right off the bat, you guys can see livestock wise, we finally have a blue hippo tang, which is about four and a half ish inches. And then right next to it, we have the fox face, about five and a half, roughly six inches. And you really don't realize how big some of these fish are until you get something smaller in the tank. For example, um, this yellow eye coal tang, massive fish. You really don't realize she's about, I don't know, maybe an inch thick, probably around seven, eight inches long. It's a big fish and blue is right there with her being pretty much the same size. And you really just don't get that perspective until you put something smaller in there. Now, you guys are probably wondering how was the aggression adding two more fish to a tank that seems like it has quite a few in there already. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, they're not really going after um, any, any one of those two fish specifically, hence the reason why I added both of them at the same time, just to kind of cut down on any of the aggression that might be in there. Now, those two fish tend to kind of chill together. Uh, they were in quarantine tanks next to each other, so they seem to be uh, getting along quite well. And um, other than Blue chasing around the hippo and pissing off a fox face until he puts up his spikes, that's pretty much it for the aggression. There really isn't anything else going on, which is good. Can't ask for anything else other than them getting along, but there is a little bit of an issue. When it comes to these black chromuses, I did have five, let me start over. I did have 10, Reggie ate five of them, and then now I have four. So what happened to the other one? Well, the day after I added these tanks, I found him dead on the side, basically at the bottom of the tank. Now it wasn't because uh, they went after him just because there was other fish. I think it was just a coincidence. Uh, basically what happened is a couple weeks ago, he ran into this, I must have scared him. I saw him run into and get caught into that bird's nest, which is the pan panopy bird's nest. It's very pointy. It messed up his eye, basically gouged up the whole side of his body. I was debating on trying to get him out. Of course, when, it, when they're healthy, you're not catching them in this tank. Some of you guys were kind of like, hey, maybe you should catch a fish if they get too aggressive. I, I dare you to come in here and try to catch this, catch any of the fish in this tank. It's just not gonna happen. Uh, your net, nope, it's not happening. So. I was like, well, hopefully he'll heal and things will get better. But unfortunately, he did not. I think they just kind of finished him off because he was really weak. So I pulled him out of the tank uh, the other day. So that's about it. Again, I don't think it had anything to do with adding the other fish. It just kind of was his time to go with him being injured. And that kind of brings me to the next thing. If you guys are following me on Instagram, you know that uh, I did have a ton of this green digitata right here. You can kind of see the stump of it. Had two handfuls broken off by these fish. They did it in the middle of the night. I didn't see what fish did it, but two huge handfuls of Digi. It's now in the frag tank. So I got about, I don't know, 40 frags from the damn thing. It's just a ton of it. So that's a good side. That's a good side of it. And that's what I'm trying to focus on. Bad side is the tank is kind of getting too small with the coral growth for some of these tangs. Hence the reason why I'm not adding any more fish to this tank, tang wise or anything like fox face, anything that's gonna get large is not going into this tank. I might add some clownfish or something very small, it could go be down the road. But uh, when it comes to overall fish that take up real estate, it's not gonna happen because they are destroying the acropora colonies. Literally every other day I come down here and I pull out chunks of coral. That's why I have a frag tank full of coral and I have that sale going on with the acros. I just have a ton of coral that keeps getting fragged and it's, it's good because it helps me sustain the hobby and pay some damn bills, but it sucks because I want the tank to grow and I want it to become very full and just be overall beautiful. Kind of doesn't happen when it's getting broke every other day. But that's just part of the uh, the hobby and it is what it is. So we'll move on to other things. Now, over the last, I would say, uh, what, when I get back to my vacation, I, get, I lost track of it. During my vacation, I kind of neglected this tank. You guys know that I didn't really do anything. Even though I didn't leave the house too much, I stayed in Pennsylvania. I still neglected the tank and the overall fish room. Basically, I was, uh, if you guys remember, I was testing nitrates and phosphate levels before I took my break. And then when I was kind of uh, mid-break, I started letting the levels come back down to normal. Now, unfortunately, I didn't test consistently on that. Basically, I just stopped dosing the NO3 and the PO4 and I stopped feeding as much. Just kind of was hoping the levels would come down naturally. Unfortunately, they plummeted. Now, if you know anything about uh, nutrients when NO3 or nitrates and phosphates plummet to zero and they stay there, for a while, you get this thing called dyno. And um, I got a little bit of it in this tank. And it was kind of one of those things you gotta recognize it early on. 
Uh, maybe, maybe during the editing process, I'll put a picture in. Uh, but you got to catch it early, and that's exactly what I did. So I will do an in-depth video on how to take care of Dino because it is a problem that a lot of people are having because they're using Roafos and GFO and all this stuff that really keeps your nutrients low. And uh, people that are kind of messing around with the Zeovis system and staying in those those uh, ranges that are very low, Dino is very, very common in those systems. So I ended up getting it in this tank and it was one of the reasons why I cleaned it back last. Not the main reason, but one of them. Um, you guys have been bugging me in the comment section. I swear to God, every day someone's like, yo, you should clean the back glass. It looks like shit. So I cleaned it. But there was two reasons for it. One, because it needed to get done. And two, it had dyno on the back glass. Not a ton of it, but enough to justify cleaning it. So uh, a quick overview of what I did to get rid of it. Uh, I did zero water changes. I uh, stopped um, my free fuel, my Acro Power, any supplements. I stopped all those trace elements. I, uh, again, stopped doing water changes. What I did is I elevated my nutrients through dosing nitrates and phosphates, the same stuff I have on my website that I used to initially start the testing process of those levels. Went ahead and uh, dosed those to appropriate range of uh, three to five, mostly, I'll stay around five-ish to six ppm of um, nitrates, and I stayed around at uh, 0.10 of phosphates. And so I stayed there and I tested every single day and that really helped a lot. Getting those levels back up really helped bring the biodiversity back in this tank, which then helped to get back in track relatively quickly. Quickly. Now the next thing I did, which was really tedious, and you have to do it, especially if you want to do it naturally and you want to keep your tank alive, you got to remove the, the dyno manually. So I went in there, ran a tube down into the filter socks, and I siphoned out. I spent an hour every single day when this stuff first came in, and I was siphoning it out constantly, constantly, constantly. Changed up the filter socks every day. On top of that, I did bubble scrubbing for three hours every single day, which helped lift up the dyno, get it up into the overflow, again, down in the filter socks. Um, I added a second UV sterilizer, uh, mainly because I have a video coming up where I'm testing the differences on um, doubling up your UV. Does it really make a big difference on how clear the tank is? This is a, kind of a future video. So I went ahead and added another UV sterilizer anyways, and that also helped. So those are the methods I used. Uh, dyno was probably in this tank for a week and a half. Again, I cut it early, and it was my own fault. We all, I mean, we all make mistakes. I got lazy, I let the tank uh, maintenance uh, lack, or better yet, I didn't keep track of my nutrients the way I should, and it happened. It is what it is, but the problem's been solved. It was uh, very minor, I had no coral loss, no fish loss, no invert loss. It's something I got early, and the tank looks as normal as it was. Now one thing that you will, that I did realize is that my alkalinity consumption definitely did not um, stay the same. I, I ended up uh, spiking up my elk because coral weren't growing as the way they were because of the stress from the dyno. So I had to dial down my reactor. I ended up getting up to about 11 dKH when I usually stay around 9. So that also <laughs> aided with some of the stress of the coral. But luckily I didn't lose anything other than what the fish have been breaking in the tank. So uh, if you guys want to end up video on that dyno, let me know. I will be happy to help you guys out with that. Um, but uh, just because something is... Uh, they, everyone thinks is so uh, drastic and bad and why could it ever happen to any you know anybody on YouTube shit happens guys and it is what it is but we fixed the issue because I knew the approach to take so uh, we are what eight minutes eight and a half minutes out of a ten minute video I might have to start this video over and kind of connect it with editing but um, yeah uh, that's about it that's about the only problems that I had with this tank dyno fixed it good to go a little bit of aggression nothing crazy uh, nutrient levels are stable now. I think I'm back down to the uh, 0 0.08 uh, ppm of phosphates and 0. Point, or sorry, 3 uh, ppm of phosphates now that I mean of nitrates now that we have everything back under control. Um, other than that, yeah, the the uh, system is doing very well. Uh, let me see if I can get a video of you guys. That acro is almost out of the water. I ended up going in there the other day and breaking off a bunch of acros underneath that millie that were bleached out because they are not getting any light, so I went ahead and removed it. Also, you guys can see I put a piece of that Cali Tor back in its almost original spot. So I finally got Cali Tor back in here. We'll see how that works out. And uh, that's what I want to tell you. Um, I'm going to start this promo probably later today. I might as well start it now that I'm talking about it. Um, so if anybody, for anybody who spends $300 on the website, I'll give you a free Cali Tor uh, from the uh, frag system. Basically, I, I fragged out a ton of it. It's uh, There's so much of it in here. So I can get you some. There's some right there. And then I have two colonies. You guys were wondering what happened to those colonies that were I took out of the 300. I just have them growing out on the bottom of this frag tank along with some other colonies. 
and I knew it was going to uh, reset. I don't know why it only does it in 10 minutes, but it does. So, so anyways, if you uh, if you spend 300 bucks on the website from now until um, you know probably the next couple weeks, I'll have to finalize the promo after the video. But if you spend 300 bucks, I'll give you a free Cali, Cali tour for your uh, your support on the channel because a lot of you guys have been asking about it, and I got a ton of frags of it healed and ready to go. So. Uh, that's about it. Uh, if you guys have any questions uh, regarding the setup, let me know. Um, everything seems to be good. No major issues other than the dyno, the brief dyno. And i um, really excited to get that Lobo back in the tank. Down here where those uh, hammers are, they're going to go over here. And we're going to put that giant Lobo back in this tank because it's outgrowing my client 75, which you guys will see an update. That tank is beautiful. For the year that it's been up, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous tank. And... Um, Anyways, that Lobo is too damn big, so it has to go back in the 300, which I'm kind of happy. I've had this about four years old, and he's just massive and awesome, and I'm um, pretty excited. I'm going to pick him up probably, I don't know, a week or so. We'll see when he gets back from his vacation. But other than that, that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions, let me know. Uh, don't forget to subscribe for more, and I'll see you guys later. Uh, probably Wednesday, I'm doing some more Q&As that I did the other day, trying to clear out some of those emails. So, yeah. All right, Till next time. Peace.